You will never be powerful in this life unless you have one thing, a free spirit. How you doing guys? I hope you're having a great day. Today I talk about the misconception of power within our society and what true power looks like according to Musashi, Stoicism and Fight Club. When we look at the very definition of power, it is the ability to control events and people. But here's the thing, this concept and this definition is based on our socio-economic framework that is ego-based, narcissistic, supremacist and anything but humane. So in order to truly define power, we have to zoom out a lot out of the system and seeing ourselves as spiritual beings within the universe. If you look at many religions, many philosophies across the world in different cultures, many define power as freedom, freedom of ego, and thereby being aligned with the flow of nature and the universe. In emptiness, there is virtue and no evil. Wisdom exists, principle exists, the way exists. Mind is empty. So what does it mean? So Musashi is saying that when our minds are free from ego and material desires, we find true power. Think about the ocean. When you think about it in a selfish and egocentric perspective, you as a separate entity fighting against the ocean and its forces. But when you empty yourself from ego and think about the ocean, you stop viewing yourself as a water drop. And as a water drop, you stop fighting against the ocean, you become a part of it. And this is how I would describe ourselves within the universe. A part of a beautiful organism. But we can only see this when we free ourselves of our egos and thereby see through the illusion of separation. There are no such thing as borders. There's no such thing as different races. There's no such thing as a hierarchy, supremacy. These are all human concepts. When we look at human beings on a deeper level, we are all made up of the same chemicals, of the same molecules, of the same atoms, which ultimately is energy. However, the system is set up in a way to forget this fact and to view ourselves as separated, to view each other as, as capital and resources that can be exploited for our own benefit, that we are not in line with ourselves that we are enslaved to serve the top who are making up the rules and to run the system. This system in its current form with the presence of corruption, selfishness and greed is a modern form of slavery. A system that is created by human beings. A system that is anything but human and humane. To act humanely means to show kindness, care and sympathy towards others. So even by logic, the current definition of power is not in line with what it means to be human or act humanely and thus needs to be redefined. There's actually a great book by Robert Greene called The 48 Laws of Power which deals with power in the socioeconomic context that deal with deception, manipulation and exploitation. And this book really shows how fragile power is and that power in the socioeconomic context is not absolute but relative. And also from a stoic perspective, this kind of power is very fragile because it relies on external forces that we cannot always control. And it makes us ultimately slaves to others and our own endless desires, which is quite a paradox. So in the pursuit of power, we become slaves of ourselves and our desires. The true power, according to Musashi and also Fight Club, is not about having things of value. It's about becoming a person of value. It's about freeing our minds and resonating with nature and the universe. Power in the context of the socioeconomic system is relative. In the scope of the universe, power is freedom and absolute. When I was young, I thought the power is something shiny on the horizon, something to look up to, only then to find out that the most powerful, the most famous, the richest people that I know are the ones who I feel most sorry for. They are a thin shadow of themselves. They are some of the most miserable people that I know. They only live to keep up their fake persona in society and to maintain their social status. They are slaves to themselves and their need for power. And it's never enough. And there's a great quote by the character Ragnar Lothbrok from the series Vikings, who said that 
Power is only given to those who are prepared to lower themselves to pick it up. And this reminds me of an interview by Cat Williams who talked about Hollywood and how Hollywood and fame and money really works. And he said that he's not jealous of any of these super famous actors and comedians because they don't have anything that he wants. It is really easy to get far in the system if you're willing to compromise your values and your character. And this is what I call the price of integrity. I don't say that it is not possible to become successful and to climb the socioeconomic ladder with honesty and integrity. But the truth is, if you live your life with integrity, it is much more difficult. And unless you broke away from civilization, you're a part of it. And the thing is, the system requires each and every one of us to be slaves and to have a slave mindset. Because the system cannot physically enslave us. The modern form of slavery is mental. Since the system is based on greed, selfishness, narcissism, it needs us to adopt those traits. It needs people to want to consume, to be obsessed by consumption, to want a lavish lifestyle, to have the biggest house, to have a beautiful car or multiple cars, to make us want to climb the economic ladder, to be on top of the ladder and on top of materialism. It needs us to be materialistic, to survive. This is the very blood and energy that keeps the system running. Even the pharma industry do not want you to be healthy, do not want you to be happy, do not want you to have a fulfilled life. Because they profit from you being sick. They profit from you being depressed. They profit from you being unhappy. On the surface level, we have evolved a lot as a civilization and as human beings. Oh, I would argue that. It's not that we have evolved, it's technology. We have become addicted to phones, to social media. Just think about when the iPhone launched. It only took us 10 to 15 years until all of humanity became addicted to a device. Well, there are huge steps for technology forward. There are big, big steps backwards for humanity, for our soul. Humanity has never been as disconnected from nature, from the universe, from each other. Humanity has never been as much divided. Because this is exactly what the industry and the socioeconomic system needs us to be. Fearful, divided, consuming, not questioning, perpetuating this system that is evil, that is evil from the very foundation. A system that rewards evil behavior, that rewards exploitation. Narcissism. It is not about how can I help others, how can I empower other people and be in perfect resonance with the universe, fostering growth instead of exploiting nature and its resources for excessive consumption. Nobody of us needs the 20th t-shirt, the 20th pair of jeans, shoes, the fifth car, because there's no end to it. Earth has more than enough resources to satisfy our needs, but not our greed. No matter how much you consume, you will never be happy and satisfied. I know many people who are very rich, who are high net worth individuals, many of which are very unhappy. And many of us give up their whole life for the pursuit of wealth, only to find out that they sacrificed the best years of their life to still be unhappy and miserable and still being a slave in the system. And all the most important things, our health, family, friends, have been there all along, all those years. But we were too ignorant and too selfish to see it. Everything we ever needed for a happy and fulfilled life, we already have. But we have been enslaved to our egos, to our sense of entitlement, to materialism. It is true when in Fight Club they said, what you own ultimately owns you. Possession becomes obsession. And freedom, spiritual freedom, is true power. And this is the point when we appreciate the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the communities that we are in our family, our friends. This is where love becomes the ultimate power.
the ultimate currency that we transact with. There's a beautiful quote that I heard from of one documentary about minimalism. Love people and use things, because it doesn't work the other way around. And I find it so true that many religions and many philosophies talk about the idea and concept of minimalism. The system and the industry and the people leading this industry have only as much control and power about you as you allow them to have. I know so many people who make multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars and still end up broke by the end of the year. Because I needed a bigger watch, a new car, a bigger house, it never ends. Think about it. Many people are earning money in order to afford a lifestyle. And the way they afford it is through loans. As I think about how much debt can they take with the amount of money they can earn in order to buy that house, that car, so they have all of those things, but they don't actually own anything. Because with that, the assets are owned by the bank. If tomorrow these banks would come and say to them, please give us all the money back that we lent you. They couldn't do it because they don't have the money. So it's all fake, it's all artificial. So even though you think these people have made it, they're on top of the game because you see them flexing on Instagram. Think about it. They're actually slaves with benefits. So what I invite you to do is to question everything. To question everything that is presented to you. To question your beliefs, your goals and ambitions. Are they really yours? Or did someone plant them into you? Social media in particular. And question the content that is being presented to you. Through the people and corporations talking to you. Sincerely wish the best for you. Or do they see you as a resource to be exploited? And also, I invite you to think deeply about the world and the universe. And lightly about yourself. Thank you for watching.